thanks for coming and joining me in the video. I want to talk to you about the track freeze function inside of Cubase and hopefully by the end of this video you would have learned something new and if you haven't enjoyed the video please feel free to give us a thumbs up but if you haven't and you didn't like the format give us a thumbs down and as always any suggestions or comments are welcome in the box below. Now you may be wondering what is track freeze and how does it work? Well let's think of a scenario. Let's say we're working on a project and we've got lots of VST instruments. So we have synths, we have uh, samplers playing samples from different sample libraries, and then we have recorded instruments and vocals. And then inside of the mixer, there is lots of different audio channels with different groups and sends. And all of these have got different plugins on the inserts and accumulatively we're using up a lot of system resources and we start running into problems. So clicks and pops, uh, dropouts, playback, choppiness, uh, maybe just the project crashing because we've pushed our machine too far. So how can we try and save uh, or gain back some of that performance where we can reallocate it to other parts of the project? Well, there are different ways in which we can do this, but one of the features is called Track Freeze. And essentially what this will do is it will take your selected track and unload certain elements or free certain elements that you can choose and generate an audio file preview. And then on playback, what you hear is the preview file and you can't edit this preview file. So it's not like render in place where you'll get a, an event with the audio waveform and you can chop it up and do further things to it. Um, this is something that you can't edit. It's just so you can hear it and again, free up some resources that you can apply elsewhere in your project. So here I've just got Easy Drummer loaded onto an instrument track and it's just playing a quick beat I've just programmed in uh, because I want to give you some visual demonstrations of, or, or as well as audible demonstrations of how Track Freeze works. So let me just quickly play this loop. Okay, now you'll notice at the end of that beat, there isn't any reverb or anything that's decaying off into the distance. Now, this is where I want to add in a load of reverb because I want to demonstrate something to you. So by adding this reverb, we're going to increase the length or the end of it or the tail end of this part, okay? Because we're gonna soak it in some moistness. Now to freeze a track, you select it. One of the many different ways you can do it, I'll show you lots of different ways in which you can do it, is by coming to your inspector, clicking on the top tab, and then under track controls, you'll see this little snowflake icon. Now when you click this, you won't get Santa Claus pop up, but you will get the freeze channel option dialog menu pop up. And there's three different things we can play around with. The first one is tail size, which I'll explain to you in a second. The second, is a checkbox for include inserts for instrument tracks. When we check this box, then click OK, Cubase is going to freeze this track and any audio inserts that we have applied to the audio channel for this track will also be frozen. But it will take the process sound and bake it into that audio file that it renders down as a preview for playback. So if I click OK on this, that means it's going to freeze the track and it's going to freeze the plugins used. And when we play it back, it should sound exactly the same. But it suddenly cuts off there. And that's where the tail size setting comes into play. So if I unfreeze this and then freeze the track again. I'm going to do it from this button here because I've got it set up. If we increase the tail size, this is going to add a length onto the end of the rendered file to compensate for any reverb or delays that we have. So if I need a short tail size, I can you know give it a couple seconds. But because we've got quite a long wet reverb, I'm going to give it a little bit more. Let's give it eight seconds worth and then click OK. And that means this time when the track gets frozen, you're still going to hear basically the reverb tail afterwards. Okay, which is pretty damn handy. 
Now, let's picture a different scenario. Let's say we're using a VST synth that is quite CPU intensive and we just want to freeze the synth and unload it from the track, but we want to retain the ability to play around with any plugins that we have inserted. Well, in that case, you would just use the box unload instruments when frozen. And the tail size doesn't really matter anymore because the plugins are still active on the channel. So that means now the instrument will be unloaded from RAM or if it if it's a sampler and if it's a you know CPU based instrument like a synthesizer then it will be unloaded from the CPU um, but we will still be able to play around with the plugin and mess around with different settings which is really useful now if you want to maximize the you know resources and you want to unload it from CPU and unload it from RAM then you would obviously check both of these boxes and then remember to set your tail size if you're using any reverb and then once you've done this you would have saved you know RAM and CPU usage now if I open up the mixer something I want to point your attention to is there are certain things you will be able to do still and there are certain things you won't be able to do after freezing a track now you will be able to you know use your fader for the volume you'll be able to change your panning you'll be able to solo mute and all that good stuff and, and you'll also be able to use Cubase's channel strip as well so although you won't be able to add any plugins or use your own inserts you'll still be able to use the channel strip so any compressors EQs let's uh you know, you'll be able to do all that stuff still, which is pretty damn handy. Now, you can also create sends. So if you want to route this to a send or route it to a group track, you can still do all that good stuff. Um, but the only thing you can't really do is to play around with your high cut and low cut filters or anything in the pre-gain and filters section of the mixer you won't be able to do, unfortunately. Um, but again, it's it's not really a big issue because generally when you're using the freeze tracks function, the, the track you're doing it on or the tracks that you're doing it on, you're already happy with anyway to some extent and you want to free up some resources. But if you do want to unfreeze it and then just tweak stuff and freeze it again, then you can obviously do that as well, which is really handy. Now, when you've frozen the track, if it's an audio file, a sampler track, or an instrument track you won't be able to edit the events you won't be able to move it around because it becomes locked to the grid um, so if you do want to change any MIDI or if you want to chop up any audio edits then you will need to unfreeze it first okay now let me show you all the different ways in which you can freeze tracks in Cubase so the first one I showed you was obviously from the track control settings up here and then you probably notice that I've been using this one here to the right of my instrument track. Now to set this up for your different tracks so you can see it, you need to go to your track control settings at the bottom, which is this cog icon. And then for each tab, audio, instruments and sampler, you need to add freeze into the visible controls from the hidden control. So you select it and click add and you'll be able to see it. And down at the bottom here, you'll have a preview to show you what it's going to look like in the track. Now, you'll notice as well, if you've ever run into this, let me do this on the instrument track, if you've ever run into this, this is why. Um, with the name of your track, you might find that sometimes if you have a long-winded name, you get all these dots like this, like it doesn't show you the whole title. And that's because you've got this thing called track name width. Now, with this, I always set it to 14, which is the maximum width, and that means I can have really long titles uh, and it won't chop them off. Um, I, this is just something I always leave at 14. But above this, you have another control called Control Area Width. Now, all these individual controls, we can choose how they are displayed, if they're going to be bunched up like this, or if we want to have them all the way to the right in a row. Typically, I set mine to about 23 or 24, and then hit Apply, and, and that's what it will be for the instrument tracks. Now, for your audio and sampler, you don't need to worry about the track name width because that will always be the same. That's a global setting. Um, but for the control area width, this will vary. So you would add in your freeze. You'd place it wherever you want. If 
by using the up and down arrows and then just set your control area width to suit your needs. So again, I could use 23 for this, hit apply, and that means it will apply it to the audio tracks. Obviously, I haven't got any in the project to show you, but trust me, it will work. Now, another way you can freeze a track or multiple tracks in Cubase 12 is by selecting multiple tracks. So let me just uh, enable these. And then we'll copy this MIDI across onto them. It will make no sense from a sound point of view, but from a visual point of view, I will be able to demonstrate to you. Um, so let's copy this event. Now, if I wanted to, to multi freeze, which is a feature of Cubase 12, I can select one track, hold shift, and then select another track, and anything in between will become selected. And then from here, you can right click and go to freeze slash unfreeze selected tracks. Now, if you're on a Mac, weirdly enough, uh, when I'm when I'm trying to do this on my Mac, I don't have this option show up in the right click menu. It's almost like there's certain things they forgot to add in for Mac users, which are prevalent in uh, the PC users. And even if you go to edit on a Mac as well, I don't have this option for the freeze on freeze, which is also another way you can go about doing it. So I'll show you how to set up a key command. But for PC users, if you multi-select these and then right click and go freeze, unfreeze selected tracks. It will give you the dialog option. You click OK, and then it will freeze all of these different tracks as well, which is really useful since they added this feature in uh, to version 12. Now, um, obviously I just showed you briefly, you can do it from the edit menu, um, but the, the best way to do it is by using key commands and keystrokes. So if you open up your key commands window by going to edit, and then key commands. Uh, here in the commands window under the edit folder, you'll scroll down and you can see here freeze dash unfreeze selected tracks. Now, if you haven't got this bound to a key already, it's really simple to do. You just select that command and then in the type in key box, click, it will go white and then you can just, you know, type in a keystroke like so. Now, before you bind it or assign it to a key, if something pops up here, it will tell you that, for example, Control Alt Shift A is already bound to a different command. Uh, so you always want to try and pick one that hasn't got anything bound to it, so you can assign it. And that means once you've assigned it, you can use that keystroke uh, to activate it in the project. Now I'm not going to bother with this, but all you would do is click on Assign. It will add it and then you just click OK. And then when you use that keystroke in the project window, it will freeze the tracks. Now, to take this one step further, if you have a stream deck, which is a hardware unit with programmable buttons, I'll leave a link to this down below, you can go one step further. So I'm just going to load up uh, the stream deck app. And from here, I'm going to open up my Cubase profile, which I'm working on. And I'm just going to go to a different page and we want to create a button from scratch that will allow us to freeze tracks. Now you can see I've already made one here, um, but I'm going to show you the best way to do this. So there's an app or an extension that you can download for the Stream Deck from the Stream Deck store, which is an absolute godsend. If you click on the store button up here and then in the search menu at the top right, type in Cubase, some legend that I'm not even going to try and pronounce their name, who deserves many beers, has created this plugin uh, for the Stream Deck. So download and install it. And once it's installed, you'll see it at the bottom or somewhere in the right hand pane of uh, the Stream Deck menu here. Now I'm going to drag and drop the key commands button into an empty slot. And what's great about this plugin is that it actually communicates with Cubase. So if you make any changes to macros or any key bindings, it will automatically update them within this app and allow you to easily select them and apply things to whatever buttons you want. So for example, I could go to category here and under the edits menu or editors menu, you might have two, it's the bottom one if you have, I can select this then go to command and from command you can see my key bound freeze unfreeze selected tracks. I can just simply select it and then I can name this freeze like so. Uh, and then there we go, we've got a button. If you want to add your own image, 
you can drag and drop it in or you can download different icons from the store which mostly are all free and, and apply them in um i have actually uploaded some free icons uh, if you go over to the vi control forum i'll put a link to that as well um but you can download the stuff that I, i've made here for the sake of working with cubase but anyway once you've set up your button you can then go back into cubase press your button and you can start freezing and unfreezing your tracks now again why this plugin is really good is if you remember the key binding for that was Control alt f if i change this to Control alt I don't know, W and remove F and then go back to the stream deck here. You can see it's automatically updated it in the plugin as well. So I don't have to worry about rebinding anything afterwards. It's really, really useful. So there we go. Uh, I think I've covered everything I need to cover with this. If I've missed anything, please, please do let me know and I'll pin your comment. Um, I do miss things quite frequently to be honest but that's just me I, I, but yeah i'll do my best anyway uh thanks for watching and again if you found this useful leave us a like and a comment see you again